led to believe that on July 20th, 1969, the Lunar Excursion Module, also known as the LEM, carried American astronauts to the surface of the moon. But could it have simply been a prop lowered by wires onto a movie set? Bill Casing says that this may explain the absence of engine noise in the official NASA footage. The noise level of a rocket engine is up into the 140, 150 decibel range. In other words, enormously loud. How would it be possible to hear astronauts' voices against the background of a running rocket engine? Picking up some dust. 30 feet, two and a half down. Great shadow. Four forward, drifting to the right a little. Contact light. Okay, engine stop. Is this evidence that the footage is actually fake? A sequence shot in a controlled environment here on Earth? Just months before this historic landing, a prototype LEM was flight tested at Ellington Air Force Base. While NASA cameras record the test flight, Neil Armstrong struggles to control the unwieldy craft. Then, at approximately 300 feet, the lander flies wildly out of control. At the last second, Armstrong ejects. And floats to safety. If the lander was so unstable and difficult to fly in the controlled environment of Earth, then how could the LEM land six times flawlessly in the alien environment of the moon? The LEM had a single engine mounted dead center, and then they had little little push jets, thruster jets, a couple of them up on top. This was supposed to control their attitude as they came down. Well, I'll tell you a secret. The instant you moved your tail in that cabin an inch, you would change the load pattern, it would begin to tilt, and it would start that thing spinning. The arguments that have been arrayed um, on the side of those who believe that the lunar landings were a hoax are very elaborate, and they have to be to support um, a, a theory like this. In the end, there's, there's one set of evidence that is irrefutable, and that is that there are footprints, boot prints, still on the lunar surface. But conspiracy theorists say that the footprints themselves are suspicious. The surface appears to be very fine-grained as you get close to it. It's almost like a powder. To have a powerful rocket engine blast the surface of the moon, blasting away all of the dust, and then find footprints surrounding the lunar lander, that, to me, would be an impossibility. Photo after photo reveals that the lunar surface surrounding the LEM is covered with footprints. But Casing says there's something even more difficult to explain. The fact that there's no blast crater under the LEM is one of the most conclusive pieces of evidence that I find supporting the hoax. In fact, no sign of a blast crater is visible for any of the six lunar landings. But LEM specialist Paul Fiel says he can explain why the lunar module left no crater when landing on the moon. The amount of thrust that you need coming out of the bottom of the descent engine is about 1,500, 2,000 pounds of thrust. And all that does is just push dust away. There's no burning or anything like that. Yet NASA's own scientific illustrations clearly depict a blast crater. Then there's one other point. If they had truly landed on the moon, this dust would have then descended on the lunar lander, on the foot pads, and we find not a trace of dust on the foot pads. When I discovered that alone, <laughs> I said, no way am I looking at a lunar lander that landed on the moon. Could it be that the LEM was just a prop on a giant lunar movie set? When Armstrong said, that's one small step for man and one giant leap for mankind, the footprint that he made could have easily been made in Area 51. Casing points out that the LEM's departure from the lunar surface 
is even more suspicious. In the footage of the ascent stage going up, what you don't see is an exhaust plume coming out of the rocket engine nozzle. What a ride, what a ride. But what do we see? We see the ascent stage suddenly pop up without any exhaust plume whatsoever, as though it were jerked up by a cable. Is this evidence of a conspiracy? Was the government capable of such a massive cover-up? To propose that this was all faked and a hoax, they have to say that every piece of evidence, that, that every physical scientific test that one could offer to support the reality of the lunar landings, they have to say that all of those are fake. I would say that my conviction that Apollo was a fake was really not according to one specific piece of evidence, but it was cumulative. This whole thing was a fake. If the moon landings were actually filmed on a movie set, then where's the evidence? According to David Percy, an award-winning filmmaker and photographer, the proof is in NASA's own lunar photos and video. Our research suggests that images of the Apollo landings are not a true and accurate record. In our view, the Apollo pictures were faked. Many of the images are replete with inconsistencies and anomalies. In fact, Percy claims that when examined, these images suggest that man never went to the moon at all. This famous scene of man taking his first steps on the lunar surface is one of the most recognizable in history. But why are such important images so grainy and hard to see? And we're getting a picture on the TV. Okay, you had a good picture, huh? NASA claims it's the result of 1960s technology. Well, if you go back and look at it, the Apollo 11 mission uh, was some, some pretty awful video by today's standards. They, these were ghostly images that just did not look very real at all. And that was a function of the transmitter at the time, the camera at the time that we had available to us to fly on Apollo 11. But investigative journalist Bart Sabrell believes that NASA intentionally made the images hard to see. NASA orchestrated the hoax in a very unique way through television. They had one picture which they completely controlled, black and white, grainy, that convinced everybody we were on the moon. We had no reason to doubt it. They had complete reins over the pictures, over the sound. I mean, sad to say, it was easier than people believe. <laughs> 